Hey, it's me, uh, William Dorrington from TDG here. Uh, so on the page right now, you can see some of my Twitter and LinkedIn uh, profiles. But even more importantly from that, we are going to go through a project service automation demonstration with regards to how does the universal resource scheduling functionality fit into PSA. Don't know what that is, but that's what we're doing. And also something else that's pretty cool is I've got this new TDG jumper, so I think that deserves some airtime. So what we're going to go through is assigning resources to the work breakdown structure of the project. We're going to generate a resource request. We're going to submit a resource request for a resource manager. We're also going to look into the resource manager fulfilling said request using the awesome schedule board. And then we're going to look at the actual project manager fulfilling it. So ignoring the resource manager, resource manager may be slow or on holiday or something other, and they want to do it themselves. We're then going to actually look at the resource setup itself, which I always refer to as the Achilles tendon of the schedule board, because you can log whatever requests you want for whatever roles, whatever skills against whatever tasks within the project. But if you don't know that you have skilled resources that are available at certain working hours, then you're not going to see absolutely nothing on the schedule board. And then throughout this, we'll look at some administrative features as well, such as, hey, let's change the resource request a bit. Let's add some skills. Let's add some notes. Let's do some preferred resourcing. So enough of this amazing PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to jump across to PSA. So this is a project within PSA, in case you're not familiar uh, and what we've done is we've just set it up rather basic and we're on the planned stage. So I'm going to go look at my schedule, true blue Peter style. Here's one I made earlier. Really easy to create a new task. You can either start typing here or from that you can just add a new task. As you can see, both have been created now because it is brilliant like that and very adaptive. So I'm going to delete that as well. We're going to stick to these few tasks. And the first thing you might do is, OK, you've got task one, task two, task three. I'm sorry, I haven't been that inventive, inventive and creative here. So the first one I might say, okay, I need a project manager for that. At the moment, because I span up this project, the only team member that exists is myself. So actually, I'm going to say, hey, let's create. So we're going to call this one the project manager. Type in project manager. We've already said that it's going to be a generic resource. It's self-assigned because you haven't actually assigned anyone to this. Uh, then you can go down and go, hey, let's actually choose a PM. So I'm just going to look for a PM of sorts. There we go. Scroll past it. And I'm going to save and close. I can then say, hey, right, next one, let's choose a consultant. So we can just say, hey, just general consultant, not senior, not junior, just an awesome consultant. I'm going to look for the consultant role. Boom. There it is. Save and close. And then why not? Let's throw on one more. i tell you what, all consultants needs to have a lead of sorts. So we're going to say, hey, this can be the consultant lead or lead consultant, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to say, hey, consulting lead. Happy days. Right. Now, this is where it's a bit different from other versions of PSA. Normally, you'd go, OK, happy days, got what I want. I'm going to go and actually, you know, generate my resource request. Well, you don't do it from here anymore, because what happens is you may go and modify various parts of your WBS after generating. Then you have to generate again and again and again. So what it does instead is if you go to your team, you'll see in a moment, in one, one second, once this has gone through, if you go to my team, I just quickly going to refresh this you'll see that my other uh, generic resources have been uh, brought through. And what I can do now is if I'm happy, I think that I'm at a good place in my WBS, I'm not going to change it. I can just say, sweet, I'm going to untick me for now. I'm just going to say, uh, oh, sorry, let's do them one at a time. I'm just going to say, hey, let's, uh, let's generate the requirements. So one requirement's been generated. As you can see now, the uh, required hours have actually been associated. The next one, I can go and select. I can say generate requirement. We get the hours coming through so they know what we're actually looking for. At the moment, eight hours, eight hours, happy days. And then last but not least, the consultant, 216 hours. Now, the key part here and the part that we wish to move on to was the fact that we can actually submit this now to a resourcing manager to actually book this in for us. So if I just go into the PM, I'm going to submit request. And then I can add a little note as we did before. So, hey, this is really urgent. Capital letters for urgency, of course. So hurry up. I hope you speak better to your resourcing manager than I just have there. Now I'm going to do is quickly duplicate this tab and I'm going to go and look at my resource requests. 
So I'm just gonna go down here, nice and easy, and I'm gonna go to resource requests. Now from here, I can do a couple of things. I can just click on it and go, hey, let's find resources, or I might wanna quickly have a look and see what's going on. Straight away, as a resourcing manager, got my resourcing manager hat on, I can see, whoa, Will really wants this, Christ, I best hurry up, what's the requirement? Now at the moment, I can see that I need to get a project manager and there has been no skills. But if Will goes, oh crap, I was meant to add a skill, I can either recall it my side, so I can come here and say, okay, uh, I've already sent something for a project manager, I could actually recall that if I so wanted to, or I could actually start looking at what other skills I want to apply, or I can ring up the resourcing manager and I can just do it here. So I can say, hey, add a new skill or characteristic. And I might say, hey, I forgot to say that actually I need accounting and finance skills within this PM. But at the moment, I'm quite happy with how it is. And I want to go forward and find a suitable resource. As I click that, the awesome schedule board opens up. And what it does is it takes the project, it loads that, it takes the task of that project, loads that up. It then self assigns the role as a filter the organizational unit and the resource type. And then it, search, it searches for competent and skilled resources that matches that request. So right now we can see the name of the project, we can see the duration it's needed for, and then we can actually see those who match the resource requests, skills and roles. So I'm just gonna change a few things here. I'm gonna change away from grid view to list view. I just find it easier personally. And I'm gonna change from hours to days just to filter on who's actually got the, uh, the the amount of time there. And at, at the moment, we can see Rosalind Franklin has the correct uh, profile and resource profile to fit this. If we want to double check that, we can view the resource card. Straight away, we can see the role of project manager sits within that particular resource. So what we might want to do is go ahead and actually book. So from here, we can say, okay, resource. We can se select if we want to hard book Rosalind, or we can even propose Rosalind. So say they ask for someone else as a PM and you go, oh, we don't have that person. What we can do is propose this person. What this does is it doesn't soft book them. It doesn't actually allocate them onto the onto the team's field of the project. What it does is says to the project manager, hey, I've got Rosalind. Do you, uh, do you want to check her out instead? And, you know, I hear she's amazing. She beat off uh, Watson and Crick. Do you, want to, do you want to go through with this? And what they can do their side is approve that proposal and then they'll be brought into the project. If they soft book, it's something that's a little bit more penciled in than proposal. What it does is actually when you, when you select soft, it allows them to be open for other bookings and it will soft allocate them to the project. However, hard booking, which we're about to do, goes, whoa, they're on this project. No one else is allowed to book them. Just jump on. And that's it. That's your life for now until you've done your, in this case, eight hours. And you can also state if you want to double book if needed. Hey, if the uh, if, if that resource actually is already assigned to another project, then double book them. I don't care. So what I can do is I can book or book an exit. I'll book for now. So you can see this donut go all the way up and go completely green. Give that a second. And there we go. Eight out of eight hours have been su successfully booked. And as you see, it's been fully utilize there so we're just going to close out of this i'm going to go back here and if i refresh this screen so hit oh sorry just unclick from here click a little bit of a refresh and we'll see rosalyn has now hit the actual uh teams list and if we go to the schedule and we do a bit of a refresh here as well we'll see rosalyn is now sitting against the first task now that's how the resource is assigned via a resource manager request. Okay, so we've gone on, we've created that work breakdown structure, we've assigned the resource, we've gone to the team, we've generated the requirement, which brings through the amount of hours needed. We then submitted to the resourcing manager, hey, this is really urgent, hurry up. Resource manager goes in, can see the role that is required, see if there's any skills see, that are required as well on top of that, and can see any notes. They then go and find resources, that then automatically filters them to the correct role and skill level and to the correct times that are needed and the correct availability. Then they saw straight away that Rosalind suited that particular request and they booked them on. We can then see them within our team and within our schedule. Now, the next stage we might want to look at now is actually booking this consultant. Now, instead of actually going here and saying, hey, submit request, what we might want to do this time is actually just book the consultant themselves. So what we can do is select book. So this is me as a PM just booking, and this opens up the scheduling board, and I can see if we have availability or not. So let's see. So unfortunately, there's no availability for this particular resource. So what we might have to do at this point is go, actually, well, if there's none at the moment for this particular role, 
what if I actually drop the current organizational unit and see if there's anything anywhere else within our legal entities? And straight away, I can see that there are many. I can then go ahead and actually hard book this resource. Now, that's just two of the ways we can book that. So we can go through the actual resourcing manager or we can just book straight from the project itself. So straight from actually selecting team uh, such as this and then actually going in and selecting book. Now, none of this is actually doable or, uh, or, or achievable unless you've particularly set up a, a, a set up the resource correctly. So where, where these yellow signs are coming up, it's just saying, hey, we don't actually have anyone available with those particular skills. Now, that's crucial. Where we managed to book Rosalind before is because she was set up. So here we have a bookable resource at the moment called Charles Darwin. Uh, you can see at the, he has a resource type of account and then within the project service we have assigned particular roles in this case no skills but we've stated that he wants to be 70% target utilization this helps with running utilization reports we can then start looking at things such as scheduling so whether we want Charles Darwin to actually appear on the schedule board and if he's available for actually searching as well now what's also incredibly crucial to make sure they can be popped up during the correct hours that they're allowed to work is to set up their working hours. So here you can actually start editing certain days or you can say, hey, actually, we're going to set up a new weekly schedule. Here you can select which days you want them to work, what hours you want them to work and when you want this new weekly schedule to actually start from. Give that a couple of seconds and it will load. As we see, it's loaded and we can start unticking like it would say, hey, we don't want to work Saturday and Sunday. We've got some uh, some new hours we want them to put pull in now. And we can state in just a moment what those new hours are. So we may change from eight to five to maybe eight to six. So we go down here. Nice and easy to do. We can add a break if we want just to really start monitoring certain actions. And then we can say, hey, actually, can you start from last December? And we're going to save and close X. Maybe I've been sloppy with my admin. We close off of that and that's really how you set up the uh, the calendar as well so all in all as long as the resource has a role assigned okay some skills assigned if necessary and then it's actually available to be part of the scheduling process so it's available on the schedule board and it has the correct work hours then you should be fine now, as this video has been going for a little while, I think it's best to stop there. There are other processes you can do, but they are the main ones. And they're the ones that I predominantly seen used within my consulting career. So I hope that was of some use and uh, tune in again for next time. Thank you so much.